Hello, my name is Beth Dixon and this is a video series based on Vicki Borlaug's PowerPoint presentation on hypothesis testing. And in this video we will look at the classical method versus the p-value method approaches. I wish to thank Mrs. Borlaug for allowing me to use her PowerPoint to make this set of videos. In part one of this series, we did one example and compared the p-value to the classical approach. Uh, to remind you what we're trying to do, this presentation assumed that the students already know how assumes that the students already know how to do a hypothesis testing on the mean using the classical approach and the p-value approach that x is normally distributed and that sigma is unknown. Our goals are to compare the classical approach and the p-value approach and to review the reasoning behind the decision process for using the p-value and to provide some exercises for the student. We are ready to begin example two. A manufacturer of a certain model of car claims that the mean gas mileage is 29 miles per gallon for highway driving. A random sample of 22 cars for this model had a mean of 28.2 miles per gallon and a standard deviation of 1.6 high miles per gallon highway. Assume the highway gas mileage is normally distributed using a 0.05 level of significance test the claim that the mean gas mileage is not equal to 29 miles per gallon for highway driving. Use the classical approach and use the p-value approach. Looking at our problem, we can determine that our sample mean x bar is equal to 28.2. Our sample standard deviation is 1.6 and our sample size n is equal to 22. Our level of significance alpha is 0.05 and we're testing the claim that the mean is not equal to 29 miles per gallon. We're going to first use the classical approach and again our five boxes and our five steps. First to find the hypotheses. Test the claim that the mean is not equal to 29 miles per gallon because it doesn't contain an equal that does go in the alternate hypotheses so the mu is not equal to 29 miles per gallon. That means our null hypothesis is that the mean is equal to 29 miles per gallon. Next we draw our normal curve. Our degrees of freedom are 21 n minus 1, 22 minus 1 is 21. Looking in our table for degrees of freedom of 21 and a significance level of 0.05. Remember that this will be a two-tailed test since it is not equal to and we divide the alpha equally to both tails so that is 0.025 in each tail. 0.05 divided by 2 gives us 0.025. That gives us with the degrees of freedom of 21 and the significance level a critical value of negative 2.080. We are now ready to label our reject and do not reject the null regions and then to find our test statistic. Following our formula we have 28.2 minus 29 divided by 1.6 divided by the square root of 22. And I paused there so that I could draw the little arrows to show you where all the numbers are coming from. That gives us, as we calculate that, a negative 2.345. What an interesting number. Okay, now let's graph that on our normal curve and we see that that falls below our critical value, <clears throat> excuse me, falls below our critical value in the reject the HO region. So we reject into the reject the null region. So our conclusion is that we should, we should reject HO. 
Since we're rejecting HO, our sentence, again starting with the same phrase, using, in this case, a 0.05 level of significance, there is evidence to say that the mean highway mileage is not equal to 29 miles per gallon, and we copy that part straight from the problem. Now let's try the p-value approach. Since we do not have the data in the calculator, we will need to input the statistics. We do not have raw data. The hypotheses are the same as what we had before. HO is that the mean is equal to 29 miles per gallon, and H1, the alternate, is that the mu is not equal to 29 miles per gallon. For our t-test, remember that your input will be the statistics, the stats. Mu sub zero is what we're putting in the null hypothesis, which is the 29. X bar is our sample mean, which is 28.2. The sample standard deviation is 1.6. Our sample size is 22. We're testing, that's what the next line means, mu, that it's not equal to, and then choosing the calculate and then the draw that gives us our results, which tell us and show us that it's a two-tailed test, gives us the t-value that we had before as well as the p-value. Our alpha is 0.05 and our p value is 0 0.0289. If the p is low, the null must go. If the p is high, we let it fly. And in our case, our p is lower than our alpha, is less than our alpha. And since p is less than our alpha, we will reject the null. And so our sentence is, using a 0.0, .0 level of significance, there is evidence to say what? That the mean is not equal to, or the mean highway gas mileage is not equal to 29 miles per gallon. Now let's compare the classical approach to the p-value approach. Here are the results copied from previous screens. Same results. Notice that the t-values are the same. We get negative 2.345 in the classical approach using the formula. The calculator screen gives us that same value. This would be a great way to check if you're required to do the classical approach but need to check your answer and want to check your answer using the calculator. Now let's just look at the graphs. How do the graphs compare? On the p-value approach, the graph is showing a t equaling to negative 2.34 5, 2 here to the left and 1 to the right. And the area to the left and to the right combined gives us 0 0.0289. That's the area in two tails. Since it's not equal to, since the critical region is a two-tailed, the p-value is the combined area of the two tails data's plus or minus t-values. Our alpha is 0 0.05. The data's plus or minus t-values combined area in the two tails is smaller than alpha, so the t-value falls in the reject the null region. Our p is 0 0.0289, our alpha is 0 0.05, and our t is negative 2.3452. Our conclusion is to reject h sub 0, the null.
If the P is low, the null must go. If the P is high, we let it fly. Circle the correct answer. The data's T value falls in the reject HO region if P is less than alpha. If the P is low, the null must go. If the P is high, we let it fly. Here are the exercises for you to try. As I show these, I will give partial answers to some intermediate steps. These will not be complete answers for the problems, and if you're doing them for credit, you will need to show all your work. As always, Walter State students are welcome to come by the Math Lab in MBSS Room 222 for additional help. I hope these videos are helpful to you and that you're watching. And if you are, thank you.